So now let us see how to generate and display bootstrap samples from a given data set using Python. So let me just comment that first generate bootstrap samples. So for this first of all we are going to import your numpy as np. This is the necessary library that we need. Now let us consider a sample data set. So for this let me write data np.array. So basically we are creating a numpy array with the name data and here we are going to enter the data points. So let that be suppose 23, 28, 32 on 37 we can take then let us take 44 49 55 61 so 70 and one more we can take so that makes so three observations three six seven eight nine ten so ten observations we have taken and this is an array that we have created use this is the original data set okay now from here we have to generate bootstrap samples so for this let me set the random seed np.random.seed as suppose 42 so basically it will ensure that same data or same sample is generated every time i run the code now let me write a function to generate a bootstrap sample. So let me first define a function define generate underscore bootstrap. This is the name of the function and here I can write data because this is what we want to work with. Okay, the, it takes data as the input. Now here what we want we want a random sample np.random.choice and here what do we mention from this data set we want to take samples of size length of the data set like we want each sample should be of size 10 only and replace equal to true so it means that we want to do it with replacement okay so it will randomly sample points from this array that we have given okay and it will be done with replacement so it means same observation can appear twice in your or maybe more than that in your bootstrap sample so the function finally will return the sample that we have obtained now let us write for Suppose you want to generate five bootstrap samples, generate five bootstrap samples. So this is above here. First of all, we have defined a function. Okay. So now every time I am going to call this function generate bootstrap, it will perform these steps and it will return the sample to me. So here, let me mention that. So bootstrap samples is equal to. So here I would write the name of this function or I can take this okay with data for i in range 5 so here we are going to generate 5 bootstrap samples so I have specified the range as 5 okay and each sample would be stored in this list that we have created now if you want to print this so let us give that command print first of all let us print the original data as well as the bootstrap sample so original data so here we would write this and if we want all the bootstrap samples because we need a for loop for that for i sample in enumerate from these bootstrap samples okay so here we have initiated a for loop and we have used enumerate for this because in enumerate when we are using this it will give you both the index also 
for the sample okay so like it will give you that first sample is this second sample so that is why every time we have iterated it and it it will get updated every time okay it will start from one and it will get updated so let us see what it prints so you can see that you have your original data set and from here we have generated five bootstrap samples from this same data set okay so the values might be repeated so you can see that 70 and maybe 32 you can see like in the fourth sample you get 32 twice okay so likewise you might find any other case also so this is how you can find the bootstrap samples from a given data set okay so now this was the basic idea for the bootstrap now let us try to use it in hypothesis testing how do we incorporate that in hypothesis testing let us first consider that we are interested for testing single mean okay so test for single mean we are first of all going to import numpy as np and let us consider a sample data set so maybe we can consider the same thing here that we have defined okay now test for single means means that it implies we have the null hypothesis as that mu equal to mu naught and the alternative would be that mu is not equal to mu naught so basically we deal with the two tailed test and if you can recall the theory so there we said that first of all we will get the observed data and from there we are going to find out the sample mean of the observed data so let us first of all obtain that so observed mean let me write observed mean how will we calculate we will use numpy's mean function so we can easily write this and we also need mu naught because we are testing it against some hypothesized mean so let that be hypothesized mean let us consider that to be 50 suppose you can change it depending upon the claim that you want to test okay now at this step what we do we find out the t statistic so that is basically the difference between the observed mean and the hypothesized mean right it was x bar minus mu naught so this is your mu naught basically hypothesized mean so you can calculate your observed statistic here only observed statistic so that would be observed mean that is x bar minus your hypothesized mean so it is the difference between the observed mean that is x bar minus mu naught okay so you have calculated t now now the next thing that you have to do is you have to generate n bootstrap samples from the observed sample right so from this data set now you have to generate bootstrap samples so what do we do here we first of all specify what is going to be my n so let that be like 1000 bootstrap samples we want now we write a function to generate a bootstrap single bootstrap sample right we can reuse that single bootstrap sample and compute ti t underscore i so let me mention a comment over here that this is basically your t equal to x bar minus mu naught so i'm just writing whatever we had in the theory okay so here this is the comment okay so mu naught is your hypothesized mean and observed mean now we are writing a function to generate single bootstrap sample and compute ti's so for that let us define this function generate bootstrap sample so let me comment here data and with the observed mean okay so basically what we do is now initially we had this sample right and we calculated the sample mean here now the bootstrap samples that will be drawn will be from here but with this mean from the observed mean okay so note this change over here and now we want to find out 
take out the samples np.random.choice and here I would write data size would be the length of this sample length of the data and replace is equal to true fine so basically we are trying to take a random sample from this data set not a random sample in fact we are going to take a bootstrap sample from this data set of size this and replace is equal to true it means that we are going to uh, do sampling with replacement now in addition what it will do is it will take the sample and then it will calculate its mean also np dot mean and here we write sample and finally what it will return is sample mean minus your hypothesized mean that we have defined earlier okay so this is how we define the function to generate bootstrap sample and compute ti so this is what what is returning is what this test that is that is ti that i have written it is basically sample mean so xi bar minus mu naught okay so it will return the difference between the bootstrap sample mean and the hypothesized mean and we want this for n such like 1000 number of times we want this to be repeated so we will generate that and we will initiate a for loop for that generate n bootstrap statistics ti that we want right so in order to do that what we will do let us use bootstrap statistic so here i have written observed statistic that is used for t and now we are going to find out bootstrap statistic that is ti okay so this is basically we will write this function generate bootstrap sample with observe mean okay data observe mean for I in range n. So what this will do? This is basically for finding out your TIs, right? So from T1 to T1000, you will obtain this. Now we are ready to find out the p value. For p value, what do we need? We need to find I. So basically, we have to compare the absolute value of this with the bootstrap statistic, and we have to see for how many times the absolute value basically of observed statistic will be less than the absolute value of the bootstrap statistic because then only the indicator function will take the value 1 otherwise it will be 0 and for p value finally we divide this sum by n so basically we are looking at the proportion over there so let me just mention this so p value over here is np dot mean we want absolute value so abs i can write so here i have bootstrap statistic is greater than equal to the absolute value of your observed okay so it has compared these two quantities their absolute values and then it has taken the mean basically so basically p value over here it is the proportion of the bootstrap statistic that are at least as extreme as the observed statistic okay so this is what we are doing over here now once you have obtained your p value you are almost done we will just set the alpha value so let that be 0.05 and when we have the hypothesis testing so if p value is less than equal to alpha what do we do we reject the null hypothesis we are going to print reject h naught else it will print fail to reject so
So now let us print what we have obtained till now. So first of all, let us write what is the observed mean. This is the first thing that we calculated. observed mean next is your print we can print your hypothesized mean so hypothesized mean is 50 that we already have okay we can print the p value i guess because that is more needed so print p value would be p underscore value. So, you fail to reject the null hypothesis and you can see that your observed mean is actually 47.7 and uh, your hypothesized mean was basically 50 and if alpha is 0 0.05, so you can be Im immediately seen that p value is greater than alpha, so you fail to reject the null hypothesis. Okay. So, it means that if you fail to reject, it means that the population mean is same as 50, right? Mu is equal to 50. We do not have sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis. So, this is how you can do for mean. This is for single mean. The same thing can be done for single variance also. So, the difference if you can see from here, the difference would come at certain steps like wherever you are finding observed mean or your hypothesized mean in all those cases it will come so let me just show you how it is done now for test for variance we can again import the library import numpy as np okay now we will also enter the data set so maybe we can take a different data this time so np dot array Okay, so we are so this data variable over here that is data is holding the sample data set. Okay, this this is your numpy's array function. So here we can consider suppose twenty one is there, twenty eight, maybe thirty two, thirty seven, thirty, twenty two. We can also take thirty nine. So these are just random values. You want to change it? You can do that. 25 this is just to explain you how you should proceed with your bootstrap sampling whenever you are trying to incorporate bootstrap in your hypothesis testing okay so i believe there are 10 values 6 9 10 yeah now what you have to do first of all we need observed variance hypothesized variance right and then we can calculate your observed statistic so let us write that observed variance so that will be np dot where because it is a sample variance so with the name data and we will also write ddof as one this is your observed variance okay sigma sigma square basically not sigma square it would be sample variance so that is basically s square now we need hypothesized variance hypothesized variance so let us consider that as 50 only now once this is there so you have sample variance and you have hypothesized variance so you can find the observed statistic that is t so observed statistic is basically the difference between these two observed underscore variance minus hypothesized variance fine so this is hash i'm just commenting this is t okay now what you have to do you have to generate bootstrap samples so for that let us define a function first of all define generate bootstrap so maybe here we can write data comma your observed variance and here first of all we need the sample so we can use np dot random dot choice from this data set and we need the size to be the same as the length of this data set 
and it is with replacement. Okay. Now, sample variance. What will be the sample variance here? We can use NumPy function. So, here it would be sample and DDF is 1. So, it specifies it is a sample variance. Now, what it will return? It will be returning the sample variance minus your hypothesized variance, right? Because for each TIE, you need the difference between the corresponding, like for T1, if you have to calculate the T1 statistic, it means you need S1 square minus sigma naught square. So, for S1 square, it means that the sample variance that we have just now written, right? Minus your hypothesized variance that we already have mentioned over here. Okay. Now, if you have to generate, suppose n such bootstrap samples. So, now let me just mention I want 1000 and maybe I will just copy it from here. So, bootstrap statistic will be here. The same command that we have, we are going to call this function and here we would write data and observed variance. For i going from 1 to 1000, okay, and the p value would again be you will be comparing your ti. So, let me just comment over here. Sorry, it these are ti's, okay, ti's here you have obtained t and these are ti's. So, now we are calculating the difference between the absolute value of the bootstrap statistic and your observed. Okay, and the average of that because we are interested in the proportion. So, this will basically give you the p value. If alpha is this, we can again probably reuse these steps over here. Okay, so, if p value is less than alpha, we are going to reject the null hypothesis, otherwise, we fail to reject. And here, let us see what is the observed variance. So, for that, we need to write this input statement okay yeah so we fail to reject the null hypothesis observed variance is 43.6 and p value is 0.727 okay so let us try to see what happens if i take 30 as the variance okay so this p value has decreased now so observed variance is 43.6 obviously if you change these ultimately you would get like variance is suppose 10. So, you can see that it is getting affected. So, it is 0.389. So, obviously, you can make it smaller and if you change these values at some point, you are going to reject the null hypothesis because your p value would become smaller than your alpha. Okay. So, this is how you can do the hypothesis testing for bootstrap samples. Here, the idea behind this as I have discussed earlier also. So, here we do not know anything about the distribution from which the data is coming, but still we are able to make decisions or we are able to check the claims that have been made about the population mean or population variances. Right? So, this shows the efficiency of your bootstrap concept. So, this is for single mean and single variance. Mm -hmm.